I think it's been a little while since I made a update on this Project Planner AI application that we've been working on. So after you create a project, you can actually invite team members to your project if you want to collaborate with multiple people. And that's kind of what we're doing on this Project Planner AI is where we have our own Project Planner AI to kind of dog food what we're building. And messaging is something that's important that we added where we can basically just, you know, kind of like Discord. It's a, it's a low budget Discord where you can send messages to each other. Um, you can also react to messages. So you can kind of do a couple of emojis right here. But a recent thing we added is once you create a team, you can go ahead and just take a picture. Just go ahead and drop it in there and it'll upload to the messages. You can go ahead and click on that, preview the image. You can download the image if you want to. And um, additionally, you can go ahead and delete this. And now that message is gone and the image is deleted. So that's one feature we added, which I think is very important to have when you have a messaging system because sharing images and sharing code snippets is very important when you're building out projects. Second thing is we did a very similar approach to the work items. So when you're creating work items, or you can call them like tasks or issues, whatever you want to call them, there's a comment section down here, which again, you can do the same thing. You can get an image, you can drop it down in here and the image will show up in the comments. So I'll say like, hello world, go ahead and paste that. Okay, so if you want to have like a thread or a discussion about something and upload images directly in the thread, you can do that. There's also a separate images section where if you just want to have like designs or something like that, you can just go ahead and drop an image in and then view it at a later point. A second thing I want to share is Host and I added this drop down. So if you have multiple projects in your application, for example, I switch between a lot of different side projects and um, every day I'll maybe work on adding a new feature to something new. So if I want to go to like the icon generate AI, it'll just go ahead and click that drop down and take me straight to it where I can see all of the things I need to do with that project. And I can go back to Project Planner AI if I want to, uh, like this. The third thing we added is when someone were to create a new work item on your project, and if you're doing like a team-based approach, it'll create a notification and send that to all of your teammates. So if we go here to notifications, we have zero unread notifications. I went ahead and added tabs here so that we can kind of toggle between the things that we've read and the things that we haven't. Clicking on the notification will take you directly to the work item. You can kind of go back I need to kind of, I should probably persist the state of that in the URL, but so that's been nice when a uh, host adds a new work item or leaves a comment on a work item, I get a notification when I log into this application and I can go and see what's new. And I think that'd be good if you have like multiple projects that you're working on with multiple people. Um, you can kind of quickly manage all those from a centralized place. I think notifications are very important. I think over here, this search bar um, host added where you can kind of like search through projects by typing um, the name of the thing. It's kind of a nice UX feature in case you have like a, a bunch of different side projects you're working on. Actually project, I'm gonna go over here. Icon generate AI, this actually is live. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the status to live like this. I'm gonna go back to uh, all my projects here. And we have like these icons to designate like, is this an actual thing that's in production that has users or is it something you're just kind of building on the side? Uh, we also have the ability to archive things, which if you're like abandon a project, you no longer want it anymore, you can do that. So I made a couple of changes on the work item page itself. Um, I, I wanted to not have to click so many buttons. I think it's kind of annoying to like have to keep on clicking buttons. If you've used GitHub issues, it's like constantly clicking stuff and then clicking drop downs and clicking new things. So what I tried to do was everything is live. So just changing stuff like this that has a debounce here. If I were to add a couple exclamation marks and wait a second, that'll get persisted as well. I personally like this, like everything is just an input box. And as you type, it'll just save after a second. I think it's pretty nice. So before I jump into the code of how I did the image upload, I know I kind of jumped around and showed a bunch of updates. I do want to say that at some point, I think we're going to switch this over to subscription based service where it's like $5 a month to have access to like this project management tool. Right now it's like a credit based system where you pay $5, you get five credits, you can create five plans. But at some point I want to keep adding in more AI capabilities. And I think having a subscription based service is kind of the way forward. But to be honest, I'm not too sure if this project is there yet. Like, I don't know if it's worth uh, five dollars especially since there's tons of free services out there like Trello there's GitHub issues I'm trying to make this something that this is my go-to for managing all my side projects um, but we'll see we'll keep on adding features and um, try to get some real user feedback because right now it's just like kind of me and host not working on this all right so let me show you how I did the image upload stuff so if I go to the messages page and go down to where we have message dot 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 we have an input field here and what I did is I added an on drop. Okay, so built into inputs, you can do like on drop, you can do on drag over and on drag leave. 
And so I have some React state to know when a user has a file and is dragged over the input, and then also when they leave the input, right? So I'm doing that so that we can have a little bit of um, dotted, like right now you can see there's a dotted border here. If I go ahead and just get an image and hover it over, you'll see it kind of changes its background color and it gets a solid border. So that's kind of what I'm using the hover state for. I don't know if there's a way to do it directly in Tailwind. I did the easiest approach I could think of, but there might be a Tailwind way to do that hooked into drag and drop capabilities. Not too sure. Um, so how does the image upload actually work? So on drop, when you drop a file into this input, what happens is you get this e.datatransfer.files object and you can get all the files that were dropped in. And in our case, it's just one file, I believe that'll be dropped in. And I do a check to make sure that it is a image type of file. I'm not supporting other type of files just yet inside of messages. I'm just gonna keep it simple for now. But when a user does drop a file into the input, uh, we create a basically a pre-signed URL. So this calls a backend endpoint right here, which gives us a URL we can use to upload images to our storage bucket. Okay, so let's go and see what happens after that. After we get that URL, we basically just do a post request to that endpoint and we throw it the file and that'll store it into the convex storage that I'm using. Once you do that, you get a storage ID and I go ahead and I create a new image message using the plan ID. So that basically creates a record and stores it in my database, right? So if I go to my schema, I have a messages uh, table here, which keeps track of text, it keeps track of the image that's optional, has the plan ID, it has the user, and it has an array of reactions of when people were to thumb or send emojis on the message. This is pretty straightforward. All it does is it verifies that the user who's currently logged in trying to hit this mutation, do they have access to this plan ID? This one's doing a bunch of checks to make sure that you're logged in and make sure that you get the plan, you have access control to the plan, and if you do, you return like some defined objects. And so if no access object is returned, then we know that you don't have access. And then over here, I basically just insert a message into that table. I leave the text a blank string, but I do put an image here, okay? And so we're using that basically when we map over all these images, I'm checking the C somewhere, and I'm not sure where this is. Uh, Checking to see, oh, here it is. If a message.image is defined, I go ahead and show an image preview component, which shows that image that allows you to click it. It shows the modal. And um, that's how I'm kind of doing that image upload. So it's pretty straightforward. And I think adding this functionality will make using this application much better when it comes to teams or collaboration. Um, that's the one feature that was kind of missing where like we kept going back to Discord because there's no way to input images. Now we have a way to upload images. So I think it's going to help us use this uh, project planner AI uh, at a much more higher capability. All right, that's the update for this project. I just wanted to make a quick update. Um, I haven't made a video on this for a while, so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you have any suggestions or things you think we should change on this project to make it more useful for you. And then, uh, yeah, like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out or talk to other developers or talk to me directly, the link's in the description. Have a good day and happy coding.